The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 16. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 22nd, 1973, in London, England. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent there is no endurance, and of the existent there is no cessation. This seers have concluded by studying the nature of both. There are two things, short and short. Short means which exists, and asat means he does not exist. Temporarily it appears and again disappears. That is also. The example is just like the sky and the cloud. Cloud appears, exists for some time, again disappears. But the sky remains always. This is the distinction between short and often tribunal. Oh. <coughs> sky, this material sky, this also does not exist. But so far our experience is concerned, we can understand the distinction between short and also. Permanent and temporary. We cannot say non-existent exactly. Existing, when the cloud comes, it has got some activities. There is rainfall, and an account of rainfall on the ground. There is some new vegetation, new flowers. Uh, Everything looks very green in the rainy season. We get some uh, products. So we cannot say it is false, but we can say it is temporary. <coughs> Similarly, material world, matter, is not false. Uh, but it is non-permanent. Bhutta Bhutta Pradiyade. We'll find it in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the Mahavadi philosopher says, Brahma Sattva Jagat Mithya. The spirit is truth, and Jagat, this material world, is untrue. Mithya, false. We say that everything is emanating from the Supreme. Jatoba imani bhutani jayanti. Everything is emanating from Brahma, the Supreme Absolute Truth. So that cannot be false because Absolute Truth. How from truth false will come? This is our place. Uh, the matter may be temporary, but it is not false. Uh, uh, the Vedic injunction is ma sato, ma asato, sadgama. Don't try to be entangled with the asat, sadasat, but try to uh, come to the platform of sat. In the previous verse, jangina bhatanti te purusang purusar sava. Krishna says, those who are not disturbed by the uh, material changes, samā dukha sukham dhīraṁ, 
आमृत तार कल्प आवाज मिशन ह्यूमन मिशन इज टू कम टू दी प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ अमृत इन मॉडल डिस्कस दिस पॉइंट अमृतत्व इन मॉडल the modern civilization the so called scientist philosopher they cannot imagine even that there is possibility of becoming immortal they cannot even and their brain is so dull that they cannot think of that we can become immortal then how krishna is speaking about immortality he is speaking something nonsense utopia no he is speaking the fact uh, otherwise if krishna speaks something nonsense utopia then nobody would be interested to read bhagavad gita uh, we may be third class man Uh, that we indulge in Bhagavad Gita and Krishna speaking something utopian nonsense, but there are big big acharyas, Ramanu Charya, Madhya Charya. Why they are giving attention to the reading of Bhagavad Gita? Uh, Krishna does not speak anything nonsense. The fact. So if it is the fact. That there is possibility of becoming immortal. That is shot. Uh, so shot. Our business should be to be engaged in the shot platform, not in the ashot platform. Ashot platform, non-permanent, are so according to somebody's opinion, false. Uh, so. False or non-permanent, whatever it may be, uh, the real uh, human civilization should be based on the purpose of uh, becoming immortal, soft, not asa. Uh, that is the distinction between uh, India and. Other countries. Uh, now I am not speaking of India of today, but India as it is, uh, uh, big big acharyas, uh, just like Basdev. Uh, Basdev is the original acharya. Therefore, uh, the birthday of Guru. Is called Bas Puja. Bas Puja. Bas Puja means uh, original Guru. Guru is the representative of Bas Dev. This uh, throne is called Bas Asan, uh, sitting place of Bas Dev. So one who is representative. Of Bas Dev, he can sit on this throne. So Guru, uh, by parampara system, Guru uh, is seated on the Bas Asan because he is the representative. Just like in the high court, the bench it is called bench. Actually. The bench is uh, to be used by the head of the executive power, the king or the president. Uh, but the high court judge is the representative of the head executive. Therefore, he sits on that bench. Uh, so, best that. 
so learned scholar, everyone knows how great scholar he was. He has written so many books, uh, uh, four Vedas, eighteen Puranas, then Vedanta Sutra, uh, then Upanishad, so many. Recorded, not written, recorded. So such a big scholar was uh, residing, he was guiding the whole society, but he was living very humbly. Uh, even Chanakya Pandit, he was prime minister, but he was living in a court. That is the distinction between Vedic or Indian civilization and the modern civilization. Uh, the Indian civilization means they are interested in shop, and others they are interested in asat. Asat means which will not exist. I have already explained. Uh, yeah. In India, of course, materially, uh, 5,000 uh, 5, years ago, uh, materially also, India was very opulent, 5,000 5, years. In 500 years or 400 years, India was so opulent that Europeans were attracted to go to India. Even the, during the time of Mughal Empire, uh, it was so opulent. Those who have gone to India will find, if you visit the, in Delhi, uh, the Red Fort, Red Fort you will find there are pictures of birds and trees on the wall, and the eyes of the bird is now whole, uh, or some parts, means it was bedecked with jewel. On the wall uh, there was uh, decoration of birds, just like we paint now. There is also paint, uh, but that is not painting, set up with stone. <coughs> and the eyes and other parts of the bird or trees, flowers, they are bedecked with different types of jewels. Now all these jewels have been taken away when British government was there. And they are now protected in the British Museum, so far I've heard. But the jewels were taken away. That's a fact. Anyone can see that. So uh, material opulence and, of course, uh, in India, it was not considered to have a big tin car or plastic plates. Uh, material opulence means jewels, gold, silk, butter, that is material. Uh, not plastic pots or plastic bucket, plastic cloth, uh, but there's no value. So anyway, uh, India was concerned material opulence, whatever is gotten from the nature, not by industry, not engaging oneself in industry. <coughs> Therefore, India, the leaders of India now, they are finding that on account of our negligence to the material side of life, we have become uh, poor. Uh, so the purpose is that the Eastern-West difference is that the Eastern people, Eastern people means India, uh, they stressed on this short portion, the permanent portion, 
spiritual civilization. Their aim was how to make this life perfect so that I can become immortal. As I explained the other day, oi histang jat punar janma jaya, jat tat punar janma jaya. The whole effort was how to conquer over birth and death. So modern people, they do not understand that birth and death can be conquered. They can imagine it. Sometimes they say that by scientific advancement, someday we shall become immortal. They also expect to become immortal. But expect or not expect, here is the information from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, he is not speaking something nonsense or utopian. It is fact that uh, oh, we should be interested in the permanent, permanent life, not temporary life. This life, this material life is temporary. Uh, we may live for ten years or ten hours. There are living entities, they live for ten minutes. And there are living entities who are living for ten millions or ten billions of years. Just like in the Brahma law. Uh, they live billions of years. So all these duration of life, different types of duration of life, are there within this material world. But still it is not permanent. Even if you live for ten billions of years, or you live for ten minutes or ten seconds, it is not permanent. That is being explained here. Na asata vidyati bhava asata of this material body. It has no endurance. It will not endure. It will not be permanently existing. Na bhava vidyati sataha. And the soul is permanent. It has no change. It will never be non-existent. Krishna is explaining. When Krishna says, my dear Arjuna, you, me, and all these kings and soldiers who have assembled here, it is not that we did not exist in the past. So what is that? That means we are not this body. This body was not existing in the past, in my past life or duration of life. But as I am soul, I am existing now. I did exist in the past and I will exist in the future. That is Therefore, a spirit has no such chain. Nartam Das Thakur has sung, Sakasanga chari kainu asate bilas, te karane lagilo mor karma bandha khas. Karma bandha khas means internal. Sometimes you have got experience that threads, they become internal. It is very difficult to find out where the beginning is. Sometimes spoiled. So, on account of our attachment, to this material body, we are becoming entangled. This meeting, as we are holding, this is called satsanga. Satsanga, because here there is no other business talking or nonsense or material thing. Here only we talk about the spirit soul, about Krishna, about relationship with Krishna, how to act to satisfy Krishna. This is the business here. That is the difference. Uh, formerly this uh, uh, place, manor, was known as Pigos manor. Now we have named Bhaktivedanta manor. What is the difference? Formerly it was for sense gratification. 
Now it is meant for elevating one to the spiritual standard of life. So anything can be changed like that for satsanga. Satsanga is mukta dusanga. If you continue, sata, as it is said, satsanga, then you advance in spiritual life. And if you associate with asa, then you become degraded. This is the policy. Satsanga chari kainu asate vilas te karane lagila mor karno Don't be entangled. Try to become liberated from the entangled. That is the mission of life. So these things cannot be understood so long we are in the darkness. Darkness means sinful life. The more we are engaged in sinful life, we cannot understand what is satsanga and what is asasanga. So we should be purified. Uh, the whole human life is meant for purification. Jasma suddhi to satya. Satya. Satya means existence. Suddhi. Suddhi means becomes purified. Uh, just like a diseased man contaminated by some disease. The medical treatment means he has to be purified from the contamination. Similarly, we are impure in this material existence by contamination of the three modes of material nature. Satagon, Rajagon, Tamagon. Goodness, passion, and uh, ignorance. See, even if we are contaminated by the quality of goodness of this material world, that is also contaminated. That is also cause of our entanglement. Goodness, uh, Brahman, if he thinks that now I have Brahminical qualification, I am now educated, I am very clean, I am very controlled. This is a Brahminical qualification. I know what is what, jñānaṁ, vijñānaṁ. Uh, but he does not uh, try for becoming immortal, then that kind of thinking is also bondage. That I am this, I am that. Even though he is very learned, satya sama dhamma tutikha suci, all these good qualities are there. But if he does not try to be, go further ahead, how to become immortal? So this type of fine entanglement is also entangled. And those who are passionate, they are thinking, I am so rich, I am so powerful, I have got so many nice business, bank balance, I have got my big family, nice wife. These are passion conception of life. So they are certainly bound up. And those who are ignorant, uh, uh, means one does not know what is the value of life, uh, lying down anywhere, lazy, sleeping, unclean, do not know the value of life, they are ignorant. They are very firmly bound up. So liberation means the more you are uh, enlightened, the value of life, the more, uh, then you become liberated. The more you become liberated, the more you are advanced in your uh, spiritual knowledge, sata, uh, sat, satsang. Therefore, these meetings which we hold every day, uh, they are meant for advancing in spiritual life. Here there is no program how to become very rich, 
how to possess more motor cars, how to have more bank balance, how to have nice dress. These are material things. Or uh, ignorance, how to sleep uh, 34 hours a day, although you have got 24 hours. Uh, so here we see big, big men, they sleep after 2 o'clock. Uh, early rising means two o'clock. Uh, that is also early, but not at day to two o'clock. At night two o'clock, if you rise, that is nice. But they are accustomed to get up two o'clock because uh, they think the more we sleep, we enjoy life. Uh, therefore, they are uh, sunnavadi. They want to become zero. Sleeping always. Sunnavad. Make everything zero. That is called Sunnavad. <coughs> no, that is not life. Sunnavad is not. Activity is life. Kirtanya Sadahari, Chaitanya Mahapuru says, don't become zero, but be engaged always in chanting. Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. That is Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cult. We are not going to be zero. We want to be very active. But active not for sense gratification, but for Krishna's service. You know, what is Krishna's service? That we are teaching how to worship Krishna. Sabanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Padasivanam. Achanam bandhanam dasam sakham matu nivedanam. These are nine kinds of services. They are soft. The more we are engaged in these nine kinds of different occupations, of devotional service, the more we are elevated. And the more we are engaged, the in activities of material sense gratification, we are degraded. Samaya uh, vahi You have got nice office, material point of view, nice business. So if you perform that business, office work, your duty very nicely, but you have no Krishna consciousness, the Shastra says, that samayavahi kevalam, it is simply wasting time and laboring hard, that's all. Therefore, Krishna says that this is the distinction between sat and asat. And we should not be very much interested with the asat, then our life is spoiled. We should be interested with saw. That will make our life success. Then we make progress for Amrita. Unfortunately, people at the present moment, they do not know, neither they can imagine it, that there is possibility of becoming immortal. Uh, this is a very important point. There is not possibility, there is fact. And Krishna, Kirtan um, is so important. This has to many places this say. Kirtana deva Krishna sa mukta sanga param bhajet. That param is, means a spiritual. There are two kinds of param and apara prakriti. Apara prakriti, para prakriti. Aparayam. Yam, this material word, is apara, inferior. Energy. It has to be the me prakriting para. Besides this, there is another prakriti, another nature, which is para. Para means spiritual. So we should be interested with the para, not with the opera. Why? And that is real life. That is real life. Here it is said. Ubhayarapu, considering both this para and apara, the superior and inferior, tattva darsivi, who will study tattva darsivi? Tattva darsivi means 
those who have realized the truth, tattva-tattva. Uh, and you find this word, tattva, in various places. Tattva. Manishanam sahasthesu kaschid yatati siddhaya yatatam api siddhyanam kaschid vahittima tattva. Uh, in another place, janma karma me dibbam ju janati tattva. Tato ma gyatya visati tadarantra bhaktyama abhijanati javan jasyami tattva. This word tattva is very important. Tattva means the absolute truth. True. Tattva means true. In the Bhagavata also you will find. Vadanti tat tatta vida stattam. Tatta vida. Those who are aware of the truth, they call this tatta. What is that tatta? Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Sabdat. The tatta is called sometimes Brahma, sometimes Paramatma, and sometimes Bhagavan. The Bhagavan is the last word of thought. Therefore, you will find in every stanza, Bas there is writing, but he is writing, see Bhagavan Ubacha. Don't think that it is. Although I am writing, I am not the speaker. The speaker is the Supreme Personality of God. The authority is the Supreme Personality of God, not I. The modern so-called philosophers, scientists, scholars, they say, I think, I think. What is your value? The great personality, they will not say like that. Never they will say. Therefore, Krishna even says, Tattva Darsivi, it has been concluded by higher authorities. He is himself authority. Still, he is not speaking that I say. No. Sometimes he says, Motagama, that is my opinion. But he is also following the principle authoritative Tattva Darsivi. Tattva Darsvi Samita, Ubhayarapi Drishtya Anta. Conclusion. Although Krishna is saying that this is sat and this is asat, this is permanent and this is non permanent, but still he is giving evidence that Tattva Darsvi, those who have seen the truth, they have concluded like that. This is, means authority. They have concluded like that. Don't, if you, don't think that I am manufacturing something. No. Tattva darsivi. This is the way of understanding. By that tattva darsivi. We also give reference sometimes in the modern age that such and such professor says such and such. But they are not tattva darsivi. They are all speculators. They are not tattva darsivi. But we have to go. To the Tattva Darsi, Tadvidhi Panipatena, Pariprasnena Srivaya, Upadakshanti Tadgyana, Gyanina Tattva Darsi. So this Tattva Darsi, Tattva, this word you should learn very nicely. That, that is authoritative. And others, they are not authoritative. They are simply speculation. Speculation means mental platform. It has no value. As this body is also not permanent, the mind is also flickering. Mind is flickering, accepting something and rejecting something. The same thing, now accepted, again rejected. This is mind's business. So, uh, mind cannot be tattva-darsha. Of course, we have to think with mind. But under the direction of authority, then we can reach real thought. Padanti tat tatta vidas tatyam, jadgyana madhyam, brahmeti paramatmeti, bhagavani ki samyam. The bhagavan is the last word of thought. Thank you.
ଶରୀର